Sir, we, America is strong. I, I have, however bad I think I've seen it in my life, I am confident that the institutions, the American people, will endure and be great. I, I have full faith in the United States, that all the men and women, and I, even in times of trial and tribulation, I have every confidence that we will emerge as, as great as we've ever been. And that we'll, well, I'm with you, and thank you for your service to America. Yes, sir. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Gates, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've said repeatedly today that you were not biased, but Bob Mueller kicked you off his team as a consequence of your bias, didn't he? Sir, I wouldn't agree with that characterization. I think I answered earlier, uh, my understanding was that, and again, we, there were no words spoken about this, but it was the potential appearance that he wanted to avoid as much as anything so else. So did Bob Mueller say, I'm not firing you from this team from your bias, I'm getting rid not. of you? So, so what is your basis for the belief that it's the appearance of your bias rather than your actual bias that resulted in Mueller removing you? Uh, because I think his experience both with me, my work, and the reputation of others about me and my work, that so what he knows that I am an individual who follows the facts where they lay. So, so your testimony today that you were removed not, not for bias but for the appearance of bias is based on your perception of Robert Mueller's perception of you. No, sir. I'm saying what I what I would think the logical case, if you want to know what his well, let's reasons were, you'd let me ask, ask it, him. Let me ask it simply, Mr. Strzok. Did Robert Mueller ever ask you if you were biased against Donald Trump? He did not. Did he, so he didn't ask you when he hired you? No, that and question that also is not that, typically that a question that, that, that gets asked during hiring meetings in the U.S. Gosh, government. Gosh, one would seemingly think that if you were hiring someone to investigate something, you might ask, but certainly then when you were removed, was, was it clear to you that Mr. Mueller was aware of these incendiary text messages? Yes. So he knew of the text messages, but never asked you whether you were biased or not? That's correct. You, your girlfriend texted you on the 8th of August, Trump's not ever going to be president, right? Right? Do you recall your reply? Uh, I do recall my reply, and if I hadn't, it's been refreshing my recollection no less than four or five times today, sir. But yes, I do recall my reply. And what was it? Uh, I'm sure you have it. I don't want to misstate it, by, uh, but essentially, no, uh, no, he's not. We'll stop it. Did Bob Mueller ever ask you about that text message? He did not. Uh, about a week later, on August 15th, you sent a text message regarding a meeting in Andy McCabe's office. Is that right? Uh, I... I I don't know the date. I do believe I know the text message Did that Bob you're Mueller going to. Did Bob Mueller ever ask you what happened in the meeting in Andrew McCabe's office? Uh, there are many meetings that I attended in, not many, but, but several meetings. Did Bob Mueller ask you about meeting. any of them? He did not. Huh. Did Bob Mueller ask you what you meant by an insurance policy? Uh, Director Mueller did not. On the 26th of July, this is contemporaneous with the opening of the Trump-Russia investigation, your girlfriend texts you, Clinton just has to win now. And you reply a few days later, and damn, this feels momentous because this matters. The other one did too, but that was to ensure we didn't F something up. This matters because this matters. So super be glad to be on this voyage with you. Did, did Bob Mueller ask you why this matters? Uh, if you're asking why it mattered, it was no, I'm not comparison asking. No, 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 between I'm sorry, a, a case Strzok. about... I, I've uh, seen you do this uh, about, answer uh, questions oh, yeah, that are not I mean, asked, but that is not what I'm asking you. I want to know if Bob Mueller asked you about this text message. Uh, Director Mueller did not ask me about any text message, Congressman. Well, gosh, what... I mean, just days after Mueller is appointed, in two text messages, one on the 19th of May and one on the 22nd of May, you reference impeachment. Did, did Bob Mueller ask you why you were referencing impeachment? Congressman, as I just stated, Director Mueller did not ask me about any text message. Well, I find that very interesting, that Bob Mueller has to remove you as a consequence of bias. Now, you don't say it's bias. You say that based on your perception of Bob Mueller's perception of you, it couldn't possibly be your bias. It has to be the appearance of bias. But when we get into actually the manifestation of that bias through your words, Bob Mueller doesn't ask you about a single one of them. And so then I look at other people that Bob Mueller picked on his team, people like Lisa Page. I'm very curious to know whether or not he asked her about any of her incendiary text messages. I mean, but, but throughout the team, you've got people working for Bob Mueller who have active connections to, the, to Hillary Clinton, 
You know, Greg Anders donated to the Clinton campaign. Kyle Freeney donated to the Clinton campaign. Andrew Goldstein donated to the Clinton campaign. Elizabeth Prigolar donated to the Clinton campaign. James Quarles donated to the Clinton campaign. Jeannie Ree represented Ben Rhodes during the Benghazi investigation. He rep or sh uh, she represented the Clinton Foundation <laughs> against Freedom of Information Act requests. Andrew Weissman, the number two for Mueller, attended Hillary Clinton's election night party. Andrew Aaron Zellaby represented Justin Cooper, who was the person who set up Hillary Clinton's private email serger, server. And then there's you and Miss Page. And it's just really interesting to me that when you were so uh, damaging to the investigation that you had to go, that Bob Mueller, the person who brought in all these people that, that had connections to the Hillary Clinton campaign, did not ask you about a single text message. And I tend to believe, Mr. Chairman, that it's because he did not want to know the answer and that there was bias and that your perception of Bob Mueller's perception of you is totally unreliable. And I yield back. Time of the gentleman has expired. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Florida, Ms. Demings. Joining us now, two congressmen who did grow Peter Strzok earlier today. He's the chairman of the Freedom Caucus. Of course, Mark Meadows from North Carolina, Florida Congressman Matt Gates. Chairman Meadows, this guy wants us to believe that his own words have no meaning. I thought Clinton parsed words really well in a corrupt way. This is a whole new level. Let's get your reaction to the hearings. Well, it's, it's a whole new level, uh, Sean, but I think the other thing is he wants us to believe him when he's saying one thing that's very different than the evidence would suggest. And so today, Peter Strzok's luck ran out. I'm here to tell you that there are a number of things that he said today that uh, are not supported by evidence, and so they could be potentially false testimony, and they are in conflict with other testimony that we've had from Rod Rosenstein, specifically the lead-up that you had in your monologue talking about Bruce Orr's involvement. You have one part of the DOJ saying, oh, he wasn't involved. You have testimony today that suggests that he is. We've long suspected that. So I can, I can just tell you, the American people know that there was one particular witness today that had a hard time uh, with the facts. So, uh, Congressman Gates, I know that this is the main question I get from people. So Hillary Clinton had a rigged investigation, mm -hmm. and they allowed her to continue because she was the favored one. He thought, of course, it was going to be a hundred million and none because smelly people like me and others wouldn't vote for for Donald Trump. So I guess the question is, when do we get justice? When does a real investigation into Hillary happen? When do we get to the bottom of the FISA abuse scandal? Jim Jordan's going to join us later. He got some new information on that today. When do we get, when does the truth come out? And when are these people held responsible for abusing the power that we, the people, gave them, the smelly people? We are only going to get justice when Attorney General Jeff Sessions does his job and follows the advice that dozens of us in Congress have been giving him to appoint a second special counsel, Sean. But we won't get justice from the Democrats. If you watched the hearing today, you saw the Democrats give a five-hour cat bath to Peter Strzok. You had one Democrat from the state of New Jersey say that he deserved hugs and kisses. A Democrat from Rhode Island said that we needed to give Peter Strzok our apology and one Democrat from Tennessee even said that he deserved the Purple Heart. That is incredibly offensive to the people who've gone downrange and fought for our country, who live in my district, who've been wounded in action. And it just shows the extent to which anything that could in any way be negative for Donald Trump is something the Democrats will embrace, even if that very same stuff is harmful to our country and the institutions that we all have to be able to rely on. Congressman Meadows, how do we... How do we now hold these people accountable? To me, if I did what Hillary did, if I lied to a FISA judge, if I rigged an investigation, I, I would expect that I probably wouldn't end up like these people. Well, you wouldn't because there, there's two standards. There's a standard here in Washington, D.C. for the well-connected, of which obviously Hillary Clinton, Peter Strzok, some of the others uh, that we, we're now seeing, uh, perhaps even the director of the CIA and uh, James Clapper, the well-connected. There's a standard for them, and yet there's a standard for all other Americans. So here's how we have to uh, actually get to the bottom of it. There has to be 
criminal Sorry. referrals that start. Enough of the talk, enough of the hearings, you know, we're starting to gather enough information. It is time for criminal referrals, and that includes going back to some of the, the evidence that to, has been put yeah. forth. Mr. Chairman, I yield uh, my five minutes to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Jordan. So I can hear you. Just a couple questions. Um, That's almost five. Minutes. Agent Strzok, in earlier round, you said you never talked to Glenn Simpson, right? Correct. And you never talked to Nellie Orr. We're also getting Correct. Calls in the office. And you wouldn't say whether you knew if Nellie Orr worked for Fusion. Is that correct? Uh, my understanding from my direction of the FBI is I'm not permitted to answer that question. Okay. But you did say you talked with Bruce Orr, fellow Department of Justice employee, and Nellie Orr's Par husband. Yes. But it is common knowledge that Nellie Orr worked for Fusion in the summer of 2016. Is that right? Uh, I don't know if it's common knowledge or not. It's been in all kinds of reports. Oh, it is not. All kinds yes, of absolutely. press reports. All right. You met with uh, Bruce Orr in, in 2016 and 2017. So the the time the, the, period that we're focused on? To the best of my recollection, yes. All right. And you won't tell me what you guys talked about? Uh, sir, I can tell you we talked about operational matters that he was involved in, but the you FBI has me. directed me not to give you, not to uh, Specifically, you specifics. Specifically, you can't yes, get into sir. specifics and details. Did Bruce Orr give you any documents? Sir, same answer. Uh, it's, I would like to answer that question, but the FBI has directed me not to get into... You can't... My understanding is, Mr. Chairman, the discussions we've had with the FBI, he's allowed to tell us those kind of pieces of information. I'm not asking what the documents were. I'm just asking, did Bruce Orr ever I, hand you documents? I understand full well what your question is, sir, and I would love to answer it. My understanding from the FBI is when it comes to operational details, including whether or not we collected evidence or didn't, that I'm not permitted to answer that. I would, sir, I would love to answer that question. All, all these I mean, you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from, right, Agent Strzok? Sir, I understand your frustration, and, and what I'm here to tell you is I think I mean, the answers would you understand, set you at ease. Yeah, you understand. We got an email from you briefing everybody on the team, all the key players, Rabicki, Baker, Page, Maffa, Prestep, and Andy McCabe. And in that email, you say the dossier that you are now looking at that BuzzFeed is printing has differences from the one given to us by Corn and Simpson. Earlier today, I asked you who Corn and Simpson is, and you wouldn't answer that. It's kind of funny to me because yesterday, David Corn tweeted out, he's the Corn in your email. So the guy himself identified himself. We all know it's David Corn, and then the other name is Simpson. So you, you have this, and we're wondering how the dossier got to, or if, more importantly, if the dossier got to the FBI through media sources, not just through Christopher Steele. And, of course, we know Nellie Orr worked for the guy you're mentioning, Glenn Simpson. She worked for him the whole time. You've never had conversations with her, but you did have a lot of important conversations on operational matters and ongoing investigations with her husband, Bruce Orr, who's also happened to be reassigned at the Department of Justice. And I'm just one, and you've said that... Well, you won't answer the question whether Mr. Orr has given you documents or not. So I'm just wondering if that was the route. Was that the route the dossier went? Glenn Simpson to Nellie Orr to her husband and then to you. Sir, I understand. That's my frustration. I understand your question. I understand your frustration. I understand the absurdity of something produced that you're reading that I've been directed not to answer questions about. The best I can More do is tell that you, you I wrote. would like to answer you, and I'm afraid it's an answer that would both reassure you and disappoint you. Well, we're going to be asking, I think, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with you, we're going to be asking the FBI and the Department of Justice to give us those documents that may or may not have been exchanged between Mr. Orr and Agent Strzok. I think that's something this committee would like to have and see what those, uh, if in fact there were documents what the heck they were. I got a minute. I'll sir, yield it to you. I, sir, I, you're going to love this and it's going to upset the vote. I have been instructed that the FBI has now told me that I can answer questions about the receipt of the documents. So I will defer, well, Mr. Can, Chairman, well, if you would like to well, how hear that or the, wanna, take your vote. The gentleman may proceed with his questions and you may answer. I, before, may I, may I confer with counsel briefly to see if this is completely unbounded or if there are any limitations on what I may say? What I'll... Uh, I've got a lot of questions I've asked all day let's, long. Let's, that let's ask the one to. you've been told you can answer. All right, so let's hear the answer to this one. Which question, sir? The one that's on the table about the documents. Sir, the documents we received from a different source uh, in the initial batch in mid-September. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. I, I'm not understanding. 
You said you got, go back, did you get documents from Bruce Orr? Uh, yes, at some point we received material from Mr. Orr. You got documents from Bruce Orr, and what were those documents? Uh, we received documents from Mr. Orr, not me. Excuse me, sir. I can maybe make it simpler. Major Strzok, was it the dossier? Sir, what I am authorized to tell you, in response to a question, did you receive any documents from Bruce Orr, the FBI has directed me that I may say, I, the, not, e, not me, the FBI received documents and material from Mr. Orr. Did you? I, I appreciate no, that. I appreciate that, but you no. did not from Mr. Orr. No. Okay, but the FBI did get documents from Bruce Orr. Yes, sir. Did they get the dossier from Bruce Orr? Uh, my direction from the FBI, as I may tell you, the FBI received material from this Mr. Orr. Is under now, this is, Congressman, I am this is amazing. I this is amazing. So well, Nellie Orr, as you are. Nellie Orr works for Fusion, works for Glenn Simpson, and she's giving documents. Regular to order, Orr, please. Who's Let us bring the director the of the FBI to answer those questions. The gentleman cannot answer. Well, he's the asked the and Amer answered. The, the American people. He's asked and answered. He cannot answer. The gentlewoman. Let's have Director the, gentle, the, the regular order I is. I understand, Mr. Chairman. Regular order. The FBI has now instructed Mr. Strzok that he can answer additional questions, and he, and Mr. Hey, uh, Agent Strzok, but I ask him other questions. Additional time to get the Mr. answers to those questions that you earlier was ordered and get it. The FBI approved. Has the FBI also given you permission to say if Glenn Simpson is the name that you use when in the email where you say Simpson? I don't believe they have given me guidance. My most recent understanding of my guidance from the FBI is to, in response to the question of whether the FBI received documents from has the Mr. FBI Orr, given you, the answer is that yes, we did, and has that's the FBI all I'm given authorized you, to say. Has the FBI given you information to tell me whether you knew Nellie Orr worked for Fusion at the time you were meeting with her husband? Sir, to my knowledge, the FBI has not directed me to uh, or allow me to respond to that. All right. I yield back. Thank you.